about again classic ah uh, again classic ah uh. so four p's right product price place promotion right anytime you talk about marketing or you talk about branding or you talk about advertising most people in general they always talk about promotion mm. that only one p because you know why that seems to be seems to be the sexiest part of it promotion the branding part the advertising part because that's what you go out and tell the world about it ma so most marketers right they would take that as that's my role to do branding is to do promotion but they forgot the other three gears that you have and that's the marketing mix so if you don't have the product the price and the distribution in its correct form to match with the promotion it's not going to work right so some of us use the term integrated marketing so integrated marketing is essentially integrate these four things to make sure that they work in equilibrium it works in the proper fashion so that you can market your stuff so you're not just using one gear you are using three other gears but the promotion gear seems to be the one that is being shaft the most often and and seems to be the one that is oh we should be driving this but there has also been a lot of case studies where people play with the product itself right doing such an excellent product that eventually creates word of mouth right creating something that is very price oriented for example and then promoting it well so you 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 you, you see out there there are a lot of cases where people play with different the four variables and how they can actually match it Right, so it's integrated. You can say you can say the best thing about your brand, tell the best story. But if the other three things doesn't de- deliver the experience, then you aren't actually marketing very well. You're doing just one thing, one thing good enough to get people in the door, but there's no sustainability in terms of the brand experience. You know, in, in terms of the usage experience. What would you tell a client that basically is saying, you know what? I don't want to talk. Don't talk to me about CPM. Don't talk to me about CPM. Mm. I'm not interested in any of this. Give me something. Mm. Give me conversion only. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure that a lot of uh, people who are doing marketing or marketing solutioning or consultancy, I've always been hit by this. I my your yeah. matrix, whatever, but my matrix is what's through the door, what signs on the bottom line. That happens, I will give you the world. But anything beyond that is actually of very little value. I think they're shortchanging themselves. Don't you think so? It is. It is because again, you go back to there are. There are different things that you do in order to do marketing, right? Mm. So if you say I want to get sales through the door, okay. Hypothetically, every two weeks I do a promotion for you, but there's a price to pay. Eh? If you continue to do that, then it cheapens the brand equity. Mm. It cheap brand. Every other day is something free. Every other day is dollar off. Every other day is a voucher. Every other day is a purchase with purchase. So. I don't buy into what your brand story is. What is it that you are doing for me? Mm. Right? You can do that, but there is a price to pay. Are you willing to do that or not? Mm. You see, that there's a reason why house brands will always be house brands. Because mm. house brands, when it is conceived, the objective is very simple: to get that segment of consumer that is not very brand conscious, for example. Therefore, they go after house brand. So by By convention, most people don't spend behind house brands. Mm. So, so for example, if Star today is a hypermarket and you have Star Shampoo, mm. Star won't 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 spend money advertising Star Shampoo because Star Shampoo is just supposed to be on the shelf. If people come in, they look at the price, they look at all of it and say, "So, okay lah, we'll take Star Shampoo lah." Brand agnostic, so to speak. Yeah. Exactly. Brand blind. Okay. Exactly. So, you you. You must manage your own objective, and are you willing to pay the price? Mm. Everything has a price to pay. Even whatever that I'm saying, oh, spend now, overspend slightly because it's a crisis. There's a price to pay, which means that current sales may be dampened a bit, but in the long run, you will reap more. If you are willing to pay the price of, it's okay. Short term sales is taken care of with all the promotion and all that. I don't have to be overly aggressive. I want to win the long term game, then the price is now lah. Mm. If you say I want now, I don't care about the future. There is also a price to pay because you will always be playing the chasing game. Mm. You don't have brand equity. 
Mm. Right? So I liken it to someone without savings. Ah. Mm. You get a lot of cash now. You keep transacting, 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 but you are not keeping a lot of cash so that you can last longer. Really. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah. In your experience, uh, Mr. Long, I wanted to ask you, uh, what are the common mm. mistakes uh, that you have seen your, your peers may have made that led to a very mm. short career in helping someone build mm. their brand? I mean, what were the common mistakes? Was it giving in to, okay, like, this is what you want, okay, I just do for you, lah, rather than being true mm. to your brand aspiration? What yeah. would you say would be some of the common mistakes that one would have made? I think the common mistakes, uh, which I have done myself before, is I think giving, giving um, too much away for free. Right? Like you actually put it just now, I, I have so many prospects that has come and said, if it works, I pay you. That's why I could tell you the example quite easily. I said, look, my line or my industry, I think we don't, we, we like to say that we are professionals. We are professionals and we call ourselves consultants. But it's very funny by tradition, this industry has always done pitching. You pitch. So pitching is like getting married after a blind date. You know? <laughs> <laughs> At least you get married. That's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, then then you find out actually I don't close the bathroom door. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so you 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 cannot give away your ideas and all the hard work for free. Mm. Although I do now, I, I I do know that the association charges charges a pitch fee and all that. Mm. But I think you look at lawyers, you look at you look at doctors and dentists and engineers. They don't pitch right you you go to them you go to a sub specialist doctor sub specialist who is like the top in your field wait list is six months you wait you wait if not you don't go to the doctor and say doctor why don't you tell me what you can do for my heart and then i decide whether you should treat me so i think it's a mistake i think it's a it's a tough game to play but i think if you can hold your ground enough and prove to enough good clients who respect your input and then I think you can last. I think that's that's one of the one of the bigger mistakes that we make. Yeah. Can I ask you in terms of all the endorsements that you would have? What uh, in terms mm. of ranking or what what would be a real feather in your cap? Would you mm. rate uh, likes on a on a social media channel as a very good form of endorsement, or would you rate here are the letters that my clients have written to me as a better mm. form of endorsement, but significantly lesser than this? So to speak. Yeah. So what would you what would your comments be on that? So as a consultant, uh, that means as a consultant. What, what would it I, I would say referrals. Referrals. Yeah. Because that's the that's the you see the biggest challenge for our clients is this. You're a consultant, you sell hours, right? And of course whatever else that, that comes back basically is hours, right? Hmm. So you have ten clients, you have eight hours, they know the amount of time that you're spending with them. Okay, and it's at, even if they don't say it, it's at the back of their mind. But if the client is able to say, I want to recommend you to other people, they are willing to share your expertise and your time with their friends and their business associates, it speaks volume about what you are able to do and what you have done for them. So they cannot keep that. They feel like this is such a good service and all that. I, I should benefit my friends as well. So to me, I think that's the best endorsement. Awesome. Very true, very true. It's word of mouth, it's personal referrals, and it's endorsement. Absolutely. Yeah. And similarly, yeah. if you don't perform, it's also a negative endorsement. Like, don't use exactly. this person, stay away. <laughs> exactly. Cuts both ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Can I ask you then, um, Mr. Long, in, if you were to look at someone's budget, right? Just say they had mm. 100% of the budget. The, it was available. Mm. What would your advice be in terms of how do I start off a business, start off my own business, get people to know me, get people to know what I do, try my mm. service as well. So you've got a bit of branding, a bit of marketing, a bit of promotional a &P that you want to put in, a bit of, uh, I wouldn't use the word gifting because gifting can also become a little bit of a negative connotation that you're trying to bribe. But at least, you know, these are some trinkets that I can put maybe a card holder so that you remember me. So. How would you spread that budget around? Just say for that one month, that 100% I have to pay it because I want to achieve people to know or a sizable portion of people to know me within three months. So what do I need to do to ramp it up? Mm -hmm. And I'm asking this for the so, benefit of the new agents that are coming in. They mm. have a budget. 
it, and it's yeah. good for them because now they're looking for jobs. They may be looking at second careers. They know a lot of people, so this is their this is their business. They have this over yes. their headphones. How do I tell my friends? Hey, now I do real estate already. You can trust me. You know me for years. Where would yeah. I allocate my resources? Can you share your thoughts on yeah. that? Okay, so it it goes back to media consumption habits again. So you have X amount of dollars, right? X amount of dollars. So agents, agents therefore don't have. I just have to assume that they don't have access to advertising expenditure, media consumption habits, data, and things like that. So I I teach this, right? And I teach this, and it's a very uh, old but very useful technique. It goes back to a day in the life of your target audience. Who are you targeting? I'm targeting a C-suite. CEO, he lives in Damansara Heights, Sierra Mas area. His household income is 40k and above. He is likely chauffeur driven. If he's not chauffeur driven, he drives a very very expensive car, right? Okay. Um, you have roughly who he is. Sit down and say, weekday, Monday to Friday, what is it that he would do? What time does he does he wake up? When he wakes up, what does he does? What does he do? Checks his handphone. Okay, on the handphone, what we do? Yo, oh, you check Instagram, Facebook. You already have it, right? Oh, maybe he's on Spotify, and because he's so rich, Spotify is ad free, right? Then he say he gets onto the car. What radio channel will be he watching? He will he will have radio on. He will be on his handphone. If he's on his handphone, what is he doing? Don't write to that detail. Why? It's important. If he's on the handphone, he may be checking email. Yeah, and you are thinking he's on the handphone. He's on Facebook, mm. Mm. right? The four thousand ringgit monthly income manager on an LRT probably is checking Facebook, but not him. He may be checking I don't know share prices and things like that. So you know, so he's in the car. He may be looking at billboards, mm. right? He may be flipping papers mm. because he may be forty some fifty years old, right? He may be flipping papers. If he's flipping paper, what kind of paper is he flipping? All these are important because once you have written all these down from his morning to night, then you do one for weekend. Mm. Then you can pinpoint where exactly can I expose myself to him. Where can I run my ad? Where can I so do this? So if you're an agent that is targeting first-time home buyers, how much are they making? Who are they demographically? Then who are they psychographically? So their interests, and who are they behaviorally? So what is it that they do? Why is it important? Because behavior is the best best prediction of future behavior, right? Right. So the demographic allows you to understand what kind of media do they consume, where are they? Then once you know this, because you already have this, then based on your budget, ask yourself where is it that I can go into now? If I'm a first time home buyer. I will be doing a lot of research. If I'm going to do a lot of research, where would I go? They will likely go to Star Property. Why Star Property? Because Star has a hard copy. Star is a big player. They have been around for the longest time. So okay, there are all these property portals, websites. Okay, I need to decide where am I going into. So what are the strengths of each? Then I decide. Okay, this is how much I can spend. I spend on this. This is what I can do. Okay, mobile phone. Obviously, people are using WhatsApp, but WhatsApp is not commercialized. So while you have it, you may not be able to do it. Well, not in the legal manner anyway, right? Of course, you can do the the one that WhatsApp doesn't like, but eventually you'll be you you'll be pinpointed, right? So you can do things like that. People on email. So you have your handphone. You have an email list. What can you do? What can, how how can you build yourself to be different from other agents? So branding is also not just getting your name out there. What is your differentiation? What makes you distinctive? Why would I buy from Ernest versus Long Yun Xiang? So you got to think through that as well. Is it? Yeah. Perfectly, Sage. Actually, uh, listening to you reminds me of uh, studying the Sun Tzu Art of War book. You know, <laughs> you got to know not just yourself and the terrain. You got to know your enemy inside out. And every yeah, yeah. Your enemy's behavior. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Lastly, Mr. Long, and and yeah. I wanted to ask a somewhat personal question in that sense. Quite sure. For longevity, and for companies that are long term, and I'm supposing that nobody starts doing business just to make a quick buck. You're thinking mm. of 
the long term, the brand, the brand value. More importantly, it is the legacy. Mm. Can I just ask you what would be the first few things that one should really think of? I'm going to make a stand here. I'm going to draw the line in the mm. sand. This is what I'm yeah. going to. What would yeah. the first few things that you want to think of to say that okay, this is the foundation that I must put as the bedrock to build it on mm. because I cannot build anything mm. on sand. It's going to collapse. What would it Correct. be? I I think a few things. One, um, if you're talking about branding, right? So if you're talking about branding, I think a few things that is important is brand purpose. So why why are you here for? Right? Why are you here for? I know it's a very lofty idea. When when consumers purchase, they may not think like that. They may not think, "Wow, I as a property developer, I'm here to improve the life of the people." I I buy because good returns are good investment. They're quite a nice environment. But you need to kind of have that. If if I will, that that brand vision. Different companies call it differently. Whether it's a brand vision, uh, whether it's a brand purpose, whether it's a it's a brand story. I think you need that story. If you don't have the story, then the brand doesn't have anything to stand on. Like you rightly, rightfully say, what is that foundation that you're going to build on? That's number one. Um, besides that, I think the second important thing that you should also build one is the purpose. I think the other one is what is your personality, right? Because different brands attract different kind of people, and you cannot you cannot attract everyone, right? Your positioning should be very focused. Your marketing can be broad. Right, so you speak to a core group of people. That's how you build. Whether you want to call it fans or evangelists or advocates, or very traditional term, your target market, because you say in a certain tone and manner, um, that position, that personality, that that's important. Mm. Right. Then your differentiation, or I like to say distinctiveness. What makes you distinctive? What makes you stand out? Mm. Right. Then think about. The future, because branding is in the long term, as you rightfully say, is a line here for the long term. So, what is my brand role in the future? What can I do in the future? Right. So that's the fourth part. The fifth part is the history. Mm. Most brands have a very rich history behind them. I Many, if I relate it back to property, for example, right? You have a lot of name brands, developers with very rich history. Mm. Whether they were planters before or whatever it is, there are rich history to tap into, and I always say it is actually the history that differentiates you from the other brand. Everybody can tell the same story. Mm. Everybody can say, "I that's the kind of future that I want," mm. but no one can copy your history. The history is unique to you. Mm. Now, if you mix the history and the future, and your personality, and your distinctiveness, and your purpose together. You eventually get a brand DNA that only you can occupy. So that's the bedrock that I would build it on. But then be, beyond that is hmm, yeah, go ahead. Be very centric to the the founder then, and then what happens to the next gen if that's the case? Uh, no, no, no. So when, when what so what you do is so because you have a future aspect of it, right? Hmm. So where's the future going? What is the kind of um, environment that you want to build? So if I, if I draw it closer to your 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 your, your industry and your, your audience, right, which is property. Right. So, what is the kind of future that I want to build? So, what is your utopia? Right. So, earnest uh, property development and Long Yun Siang property development, we have very different interpretation of our own utopia, right? So, my future is like this. Your future is like this. So, it doesn't have to be founder oriented. It can be your second generation, third generation, or even if it's not run by third ge- uh, a family, but the, the the future your your future uh, uh, um, uh, managers, right? That are running it. What is the kind of future that they want to build? Then you move towards that, but grounded on the key values that comes from the history of it. Right? Yeah, and then your your interpretation actually rings a very strong resonance within me. I mean, I remember the Johnson and Johnson credo. That's a yeah. very strong, powerful visualization in terms of where they want a company to go and what's the purpose of the company. So. I identify with what yeah. you said straight away, yeah. and I also yeah. am recalling a, a history of my a period of my life whereby the things that I buy, even though we have price for price, the one that has a better story that I d- identify with, maybe you can call it romanticism or nostalgia. Yeah. To me, that's the value exactly. rather than you know run of the mill factory made. Okay, I'll pay more for this because 
there's only six bottles rather than you know six. Yeah, bottles. exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I think that's exactly. a, a lot of the missing links is actually the the part that makes it unique. Sometimes is seen as not um, valuable, but actually there's so much yeah. value. Uh, that's All what right. you see right now: handmade, home cooked, personal attention, personalized. Okay. Wow, this one yeah. has so much value, and I think a lot of us make the mistake, Mister Long. Free lah, yeah. First lah, if got if you do if it happens for you, then you pay me. I think we a lot of times marketers are always caught short, and I do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes. Correct. But, the really good ones, they can command whatever fee, but for the rest who are starting out, most of the time they take what the market gives. Yeah. Correct. Right. But I, I suppose that's that's always part of the journey. Mm. So I, I think it's important. I mean, if I go back to the restaurant example of giving out leaflets, right? I mean, I, I would love to run, you know, video ads on Facebook. But if you can't do that right now, that is a dream, right? And dreams do come true, right? So I have to give leaflet out now, so be it. I have to give name card out to friends and say, can you help me pass to some other friends and so be it. But I know in 12 months time, I am going to run that video ad. Mm. In 18 months time, I'm going to use that famous blogger and Instagrammer to eat at my shop and advertise it. So if today you expect me to give you for free, okay, but that's not, that's, yeah. you know, in the future, I won't be doing that. Yeah. So long, sorry, I know I asked you the last question, but something really- No really worries, not <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about brand, uh, brand leverage of KOLs? Because sometimes the private mm. lives of KOLs may not be as, pristine as you think it to be and by associating with KOL sometimes it may backfire when Alama, you see something else or the public sees something else that they were not meant to see would working yeah. with KOLs be a very strategic uh, or tactical reason to use them in your opinion okay in my in, in our view is that um, that is again like media so if I treat KOL I mean with all due respect I, I know they are you know good respectable and it's, it's, it's an honorable work that they are doing, they're providing a service. Um, but from a professional viewpoint, KOLs to me is like a media, right? So when I decide, we will again decide based on the numbers, obviously, so those, those are the quantitative reason. Then there will be the qualitative reason. Obviously, most people will know, does it fit with my brand, right? I mean, if I'm a golf equipment sports, company i cannot use the kind of kol that my 16 year old teenager daughter you know follows right so there must be a brand fit there must be a personality fit there must be a brand value fit that you know each brand has to has to evaluate i think they play that role but i think importantly it is to go back to what is the objective that you want to achieve with this right what is the objective that you want to achieve with this is it numbers is it word of mouth Evaluate based on the objective is the most important one. There, there will be definitely places to use. And if I go back to you know some of the KOLs, their lifestyle and things like that. I mean, even in those days when there are no KOLs, there are no influencers, marketing, so to speak, right? Uh, we would go to ambassador, celebrities, right? And that has always been a risk. That has always been a risk. When we use celebrities, when we use ambassadors, we need to evaluate. We need to do our own homework and say, is there a right fit? And if something happens, what is it that we do, right? So it's the, so you would use the same technique on, the, on, the, on KOLs as well. Well, Mr. Long, it's been such an exciting conversation that I had with you today. And thank you, I, thank you. I've personally learned so much and I'm thank very, you. very enthused that a lot of things that you're saying resonates very closely to what we are trying to also achieve to help people build brands build stories yeah. more importantly yeah. those stories to influence the beliefs of others as well so thank you again so Mr. Long thank you so much for your time I look forward to our next catch up and more importantly please continue rocking the world thank you <laughs> take care